Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Memo, and this is uh, my collaborator on this project, Davide Coyola. I'd like to start by saying, actually, the other works are absolutely amazing, and having you know, seen their work, seen them talk about their work, it just, um, yeah, we really, really realize um, that winning the Golden Nick on this is really special, because seriously, the other works are absolutely amazing. We're going to keep our talk quite brief, so we can have more of a, uh, more of a chat later. Um, I guess we'll start about how the project came about. So, um, Quayle and I, we have our individual practices, and, but we've known each other for many years, and we've spoken about collaborating together because we share, we share very similar interests and very similar processes. Generally, our output has been a bit different, our aesthetics have been a bit different, but we share these really common interests. So we've been talking about collaborating a lot. And then we had the opportunity to basically do this project. And how it came about was the, uh, the National Media Museum in the UK had an open call for proposals. Uh, they had this commission for, during the Olympics as part of the Cultural Olympiad, they wanted to uh, curate an exhibition which looked at the history of the artistic study of movement. And that was the context that they were putting around this proposal. So in their exhibition, they were going to have original Edward Mybridge prints, original Etienne Jules Marais prints, Har um, Harold Edgerton, the original Time Slice trick from Tim Macmillan, the Praxiscopes, all this really, really historic um, iconic pieces of work and devices which uh, look at studying movement. So in this context, we came up with this idea of what we wanted to do. We wanted to create a really, really abstract piece that studied human movement uh, and really tread the line between abstract and figurative of recognizability and completely abstract. And we decided we wanted to work with sports for a number of reasons. Uh, we've worked with dancers in the past, but one interesting aspect of sports, uh, as opposed to, say, dance, was uh, dance is about, is about form, it's about communicating uh, with the body, whereas sports, well, on many, it has many different levels, but one component of it is it's about winning. It's not really about um, communicating through the body. So we were wondering, what does a body that's trying to win look like. There's also the, the huge entertainment aspect of sport. It's, uh, in fact, maybe you'd want to like to talk yeah, about that. I, mean, I, I think it's, in a way, I mean, we'll talk about this in, in a bit, but the, all the motion is generated by the uh, analysis of some videos of, of real sport. I mean, we are uh, quite interested in, in the actual, really, transformation of something that existed for real, and we already experienced that in a certain way and somehow grabbing that and transforming it, stripping it back. It's kind of interesting, this idea of taking something so, so iconic and somehow transforming it into something completely different, somehow strip it back of its meaning and focus on the pure mechanics of, of motion. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of different layers of what we want. Yeah, well, so when we started, and this is quite common, I think, when we started, we didn't know what it would look like. We knew what we wanted to explore, which is, creating something really abstract that's non-narrative in a way, but it has its roots stemmed in the real world. So we would take the motion from the real world and put it in this completely abstract universe where there's this thread between reality and that thread is what causes you or hopefully enables you to engage with it. So I'm not gonna go through this because there's not enough time, but this is some of the, you know, the inspirations and the research, Edward Mybridge, late 1800s, um, so we were looking at the, you know, the history of the study of movement, Etienne Jules Marais, huge inspiration, one of the pioneers of kind of photography. This is still late 1800s, um, and he invented this mocap suit, you know, really, really primitive, where he could underexpose and create things like this. Again, this is 1800s. So it's a really, really well-studied field, this. I mean, this guy is a genius. He went ahead and invented this kind of photography gun. So you were looking at these, he built these sculptures, zoetrope, he invented this machine where he could visualize these fluid dynamics. Again, this is about 1901, 1902. So it's important to understand what people have done, not only this year or last year, but 100 years ago, because it, this was quite a, a strong starting point. Harold Edgerton from MIT, quite famous for this high-speed photo. And so I'm gonna skip through these. There's a plethora of amazing work, these kind of images. So this is quite, signifies 
a part of the project that we're interested in, which is this is in this world. It, it happens right in front of our eyes, but we don't see it because of the way our brains have evolved to, to respond to the way you know, space and time relate. But this is what's happening. So what we try to do is we try to visualize things that are actually happening, but we don't necessarily, we don't see. It's this fascination, I think, to visualize the invisible in a way is almost kind of this idea of expanding your uh, senses and try to really detach completely from reality or the way we perceive reality. And one thing that was very apparent is these works, I mean, the, these particular images, Harold Edgerton is about 40s, 50s, but, you know, Etienne Jumare was doing this in the 1880s, and we didn't want to document these uh, phenomena. What we want to do is we want to amplify them. We want to use these phenomena that uh, we happen in our real world and use them as seeds, and then we can design a process and we guide how these seeds grow and what they become. I think that, that something interesting is this kind of metaphor that I quite like to do in a way, in somehow to try to explain what we do and that the sort of um, methodology behind the, the work that, I mean, animation is a tedious thing. In this case, there's no keyframes really, but still there's a tedious thing to, you know, program these systems. But I think, so generally, animation tends to be something that you really prepare uh, and storyboard. You really choose what you're going to say and then kind of execute this. Well, I think what we do, it, it's in a way, it's a bit more similar to making a documentary in the sense that you have something that you want to research and the documentary, doing the documentary is a way of researching this subject. So you don't really know exactly what the outcome will be because it's making a documentary that it's actually, it's how you discover things. But what we're trying to do is to create these systems, a set of rules, define the boundaries of what we want to explore and the sort of rules of how we're going to explore right in the beginning and then somehow explore very freely within these boundaries without knowing the exact output. So it's not so much about having an image in mind and generate this image and work towards to generate the image, but it's rather creating something that is alive, that you have a conversation with. So it's like a process of discovery, I think. It's very exploratory, and that's what's, um, it, it, that's kind of part of the joy. This final image as part of the kind of research inspiration was Duchamp's New Descending a Staircase, which was actually also inspired by uh, Mybridge's work, particularly the naked woman walking down the stairs. And this was interesting because it was taking a phenomena that was existent in this world that we don't necessarily see, but not documenting it, but building these layers of imagination around it and in a way amplifying it. And we'll just show this video as uh, just the last, our last bit. This was, um, this is a process video. So the footage that you see in the top left is the footage that we worked with. It's from the Commonwealth Games. We had the option of working with mocap data. We wanted to work with actual competition footage because we wanted to know that what you're seeing in the final piece is actually what happened in competition. It's so not... It's like this, I mean, translating something that, you know, we experience it as real. I mean, it's somehow this kind of translation between real and artificial, and you know, it's yeah. not something that is choreographed with, again, a mocap studio kind of actor doing sport in a specific place, but you know, this is what we experience in the real life in a very different context that has been transformed. So th this is, it, I mean, it's a sort of somehow kind of breakdown of, of some of the data that has been generated through this that have been used to actually create uh, the, final, the final piece. So just a little bit of information before we sit down. The analysis of the video was done manually um, in that to automatically detect the kind of 3D animation data is, wasn't within the scope of, the, of, the, of this art project basically. So it was done through a technique called 3D match moving, which is a bit tedious. And then after that, we got a skeleton, an animated 3D skeleton, which we fed into the custom system. From beyond that point, there's no keyframes. It's just designing a set of rules which take the animation data and generate these three and many other kind of really minimal visualizations. And then off those minimal visualizations, we build the final, uh, the final piece. And I think that's it, really. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>